Hey, where the cribs? You watching Andy? Hey everyone, it's Alicia from Ambi, and I'd like to welcome you to our interview with The Cribs. How are you all? Hi Alicia. Yeah. Good, yeah. We've, got, we've all got van lag from being in the van for a long Van like lag is kind of like jet lag, but it's, it's derived from driving for 1,500 miles and not being able to sleep <laughs> at any point. So it feels like jet lag, but it's, you haven't been on a jet. We've been, like, we have to sleep in the van as well. It's kind of like the only time we get to uh, you know, really rest on these tasks. It hasn't really been scheduled to allow us to sleep or anything, but I suffer from really bad sleep paralysis and in the van, it's just a total, that's like, it's a pretty scary proposition, <laughs> so. You're now touring. But aside from that, we're good. Yeah? Well, that's good. Well, you're now touring in support of your latest record for all my sisters, which we have been playing a ton at the Ambi home base. So, how's the tour been treating you so far? How have the shows been? Well, we started out in the Pacific Northwest. That was cool. We started in Vancouver, and we have some friends in Vancouver. It's like a it's a fun punk rock show, and then Seattle and Portland. The Northwest was great. Um, then we had, like I said, we had to drive like 1,500 miles to get to St. Paul, Minneapolis. Um, and then we're right in the Chicago. middle of like Chicago. That was great. Chicago's always really, it's always been a like cool city for us to, to play in. But then we're in the middle of a five show run, so we're, we're <laughs> and that's after like two 24 hour days in the van. So kind of getting to that point of tour now where you start to it starts to hit lose you. it a little <laughs> bit. But but it's nice because we haven't been to Canada for a few years and we, we're doing three shows on this run in Canada which you know feels good. You know, it feels good to be here again. Well, somebody was telling me that it tends to get overlooked a little bit now. Like when we were in Vancouver people were saying oh bands don't um, come to Vancouver as much as they used to do which I don't know if that's true or not but um, I don't know I've always I've always found that some of the better shows are in, in, uh, on the Canadian leg anyway. Maybe people are just more appreciative for that reason, I don't know. Well, earlier this week you had released a new track called Wish I Knew You in the 90s. It's awesome. So could you just tell our viewers a little bit about mm. the new release? That's cool. I'm glad that people, I'm glad you think it's awesome. It was just, the, um, what happened was we, we were just, when we, uh, when we, I think it was, Summer 2014, we were in uh, Wakefield and we were doing some writing sessions for, for all my sisters. And uh, while we were writing, we had like all our old gear from our old studio. We used to run a studio in Wakefield, a really ramshackle affair, but that was like back in 2002. So we just brought all that old gear to the writing sessions and we were just recording the ideas as we went along. And uh, Wish I Knew You in the 90s was just... I think we'd kind of thought that we'd run out of tracks and then we just found it, you know, we just found the, that, like, we found the tapes for that and we we're like, oh, this is kind of interesting. So I just finished it at home, I put some vocals on it and it, again, it was like a really kind of like quick, you know, I just like went in and just sang whatever came out, you know, we, we, I didn't really put that much, um, we didn't, I, I feel like well, it's it, a B-side, yeah. you know, and that's, mm -hmm. and that, so it's cool because nowadays like B-sides, I think they get more attention. Like they've always been really important to us as a band. Like, you know, uh, across our first few records, we used to always put out multiple seven inches and stuff. And we we never wanted to like rip the fans off by just putting like a remix or a live version on there. So we always made new B sides. And then with this album, um, I feel like now because of you know the way that uh, people report things like on on the internet and how immediate stuff is, like I think B sides get more attention. And it's like that this is just, this is the B-side to the next single, Summer of Chances, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, I guess you know, it's, it's like we it's didn't, cool that everyone, it's like, oh, it's a new track. Yeah, because we didn't really, we same didn't, amount yeah. of attention as a single or Sorry. something. Yeah, we, cause we didn't really think we were putting out a new track, you know, we were like, oh, we've recorded a B-side for the seven inch, you know, and, um, but yeah, it's cool, and I'm glad people like it, because um, I think that, you know, like, w often, B-sides end up being some, tend to become some of my favourite songs anyway. Just I think just because um, for the reason you, you said you, know. you approach them in a really casual way, you know. You just you don't put too you don't put too much thought into it, and you maybe slightly indulge yourself a little bit, and so like they come out like almost like a really uh, spontaneous sound, and I think that yeah. that's vibe for, for like that's it can be really good. And being that the song's titled I Wish I Knew You in the 90s, what are some of your favorite things about that decade? Um, just maybe because uh, we were 
still really like kids at that point and you so there was a lot of a lot of like uh, well in the 90s we were still kind of on that like cusp of being well you kind of like on the bridge of being like still really young and naive but also like starting to get into you know we like the darker side of life so. you know we started playing music in 1992 and uh, so all my memories of like the early 90s are like listening to punk rock music and learning how to play the bass which that's one of the most exciting times of my life you know and uh, because like that feeling that you can you can actually do that you know and then we st- and and so that was my f- feeling of the early nights i the thing i really miss is like i i really miss tab clear it used to be a <laughs> drink that they made for about one year in the 90s <laughs> it's a really cool story behind it as well it was like a well i think it's a really cool story you should check it out all right i used to like um gladiators as well that was a 90s <laughs> thing <laughs> we all used we all used to really <coughs> like gladiators. I remember we used to like drive down to Birmingham from where we were in Wakefield, and that just used to seem like the r- most longest journey to like. It felt like you were in a different part of the earth or something. Well, that like was that. the the first. I th- guess the first live show we ever saw was the Gladiators live show, mm-hmm. which you know. <laughs> we all really liked Super Nintendos and stuff as well back in the in the nineties. We oh yeah, and we stuff. stayed at somebody's apartment the other night in Chicago, and they had a Simpsons pinball machine is really cool you know so and I think that was probably manufactured in 1991 <laughs> well something I love is how you guys are constantly making music even though you just released a new record I heard that there's a punk album in the works so how's that coming along yeah it's good it's not necessarily it's not necessarily in the works at the minute it's kind of like there's still well I mean I it's about yeah there's like four tracks or something rec- like fully recorded for it but four finished uh, mixed uh, tracks yeah, but they ca- they, uh, they date back from the, you know, just after we'd finished recording Brazen Bull, that's when we were recording um, the tracks with Steve. And then, um, y- you know, uh, the plan is definitely to go back in with him, like, pretty soon. But the thing about working with Steve is, and the w- well, the way that we work with him is it's really quick, you know. It's like if we, once we have the songs ready to go, you know, it'll probably be, you know, recorded and ready to go in less than a week, so... <laughs> You know, it could come out at any time, really, we but we just don't know. to do it, you know? <laughs> and because um, again, it's kind of going back to like what Ryan was saying about the other track. It's like we sort of go in there with like basic idea what we're gonna do, and then just finish it like on the mm. spot a little bit, you know. And I think that for th- for that kind of for playing that kind of um, for playing that kind of music, it's for us. We feel like first few times you play the song is the time that you're most excited about it and the more that you play it the more bored you get so with Steve like he just captures it live and I think that that would be a good way of going in and not fully knowing what we were going to do like we did it for us. it's really rad though you know what we've got so far I actually really like I'm really happy with it. like it's some like it's kind of like like cool like dirty you know like raunchy riffs and stuff and just like it, you know I don't feel like, uh, you know, I, I feel like... It's heavy, it's, it's almost like metal in place. Yeah, but, you know, not like speed metal or yeah. thrash metal <laughs> or death metal or black metal either, but, you know, it's got that got that edge to it. Well, punk music mm. is, or punk as a genre in general, mm. has been thrown around a lot, especially with all the subcategories and genres yeah. that are around there nowadays, because when I think of punk music, I'm thrown back to when I was younger, listening to Sex Pistols, The Clash. Yeah. So what, for you, defines punk? Well, something that I find really funny is that, yeah, like, you know, like, the pop punk of the 90s, that is now almost considered legitimate punk yep. for some people, yeah, whereas when it was back. around, it was like, people didn't really think that at all. That, <laughs> that sounds like, yeah. that, that sounds kind of lame, but the, the, like, I remember in, like, 97 and 98, like, people didn't take that bubblegum punk seriously at all, but I guess it's, like, it has a nostalgia to it now, and so, like, you know, there's, like, a new generation, or a new wave of kids getting into that, so just to remember it from when they were kids. In fact, Ross was younger than us, and he used to like some of that bubblegum punk, and, like, Mm -hmm. you know, I, it, for for us, like, we were a bit older, like, we started getting into music in, like, like I said, like, the early 90s when we were, like, you know, 12, 13, or whatever, and, um, that that was that was a, it, you know, but by the time that stuff rolled around, we were already pretty 
moved on into like yeah. heavier stuff, I guess. I think it's all in the approach, really. You know, it's like I think the approach of the band is kind of you know what for me would feel punk. It's not necessarily the music that people play in, or you it's know, it's just an ethic. Or it's not like it's not just like someone going out there with like and sloganeering, you know what I mean? And like you know, because a lot of people, you know, like oh, it's it's an attitude and stuff, and it is, but. But, you know, a lot. Like, I think that some people think that, you know, that means that, you know, if you just, you know, if you're purely political, you know, you have to be political to be punk, or you have to, yeah, just, be, you know, do a lot of sloganeering or whatever. But I just think it's just more the approach, you know, you know, the approach that people take to playing music or, or any kind of art, really. The way that I see it is how you feel about how other people feel about you. That's yeah. the way that I see it. Like, if you're not really that bothered about that, it doesn't change the way that you do stuff. That's kind of the, that's kind of the, uh, you know, the, the crux of punk, and I think it's also like the primary appeal of it. Like that's why you get into bands like these guys don't care, you know, and this is like this is it represents something to you. And then for us, like we've always tried to like tried not to be affected by what's going on around us because it, it, it can only really be detrimental a, a lot of the time. I mean, if you if you are affected by the criticism that you get, then like you lose something. And I think if you're affected by the praise that you get, you lose something too. So it's like a uh, that's I don't know. But for me, it's <laughs> that's it. In a you also have to have a safety pin through your nose as well. That's and important. And yeah. Green hair. yeah. <laughs> and, uh, oh, and bands yeah. and big shorts. Too. Yeah. <laughs> so you've got to be in, nowadays. You have to be an amalgamation between seventies punk. And late nineties punk, and a oh, backpack as well. That's and another thing that, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I do. I've seen thing, that a lot lately. Another thing I miss about the nineties is piercings. I think pi- piercings should definitely come back. Uh, there was a time where everyone had piercings, and I thought that was totally rad. So that's another thing we miss about the nineties. Yeah, I like piercings. <laughs> well, the Crimson, of course, known for your awesome music over the years. So just to get to know you a little bit better outside of music, what are some of your interests as a collective? We're just obsessive. Like, th- <laughs> like the three of us like are obsessive, so it can be anything. Like, I, I, I went through an obsession of, like, yeah, like obs- obscure sodas. Like, and I got really deeply into that. Like, Ryan got into like a Charles Manson obsession, and mm. like, and Bram Stoker's Dracula, another nineties thing. Like that movie, man. I was obsessed with that for a little while. I got obsessed I don't know with Martika for a little while. <laughs> I'm quite into space and stuff like that, Ross you know, like, really into yeah. Got like a mm. telescope at home and stuff, which I guess that doesn't make me an astronomer, but um, I, yeah. I, I, I would say that Ross is less obsessive than me, and like, Ross is like the sort of person, like he, he's interested in astronomy and that's something he likes, whereas me and Ryan were always looking for something to like take up all, all of our time. time, you know, like, yeah, and like then it just, but then we, if you get into something, we'll rinse it to the point where you don't want to, you don't want it ever again. You know? <laughs> oh, they'll see, like, you'll see each other sat around with like a glazed look on the face and be like, you're thinking about Charles Manson again, <laughs> aren't you? Like, yeah. <laughs> no, that's awesome. I love it, you know, that's kind of what makes up the inspiration for the records, like, you know, three month upset, three month fixations on, on like different subjects, you know, so. That's, it's hard to pin down. I Queen was one of them too. Queen, yeah. That's been a that's been a long-standing one for years. That's that falls within the music category too. Awesome. Well, to wrap everything up today, uh, just for all of your fans, who are going to be watching our interview. Is there anything you'd like to say to all of them? Yeah, just keep rocking, guys. Rock hard, <laughs> rock heavy. That's all that matters. And bring back the piercings. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Get your tragus pierced. Just get everything pierced. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But that was everything up. I just want to say a massive thanks to you guys for your time today because oh. we've been waiting to do this for such a long time. Thanks, Alicia. So Glad thank we made you. it happen. Thanks. Thanks. And remember, everybody, you can visit us at amusicblogger.com for exclusive interviews, features, and videos with your favorite <laughs> bands. We'll see you next time.